Hello everyone, it's Rosin, and I'm here today with another update video. So, I last made an update video about six months back or so, and uh, I just thought I'd check in again to talk about where I'm at with things and kind of what my plans are for the next uh, six months or so, maybe beyond. It kind of depends on how this all works out timeline-wise and, and kind of how everything uh, goes and how fast things uh, take to make, or how slow things take to make. Um, I'm kind of at the mercy of a lot of different factors in my life for, uh, you know, I, basically my, at this point, y'all know, I probably, I, I don't have a real consistent schedule. I just kind of make things whenever I can afford to make things. Um, and that's just kind of been how it's been for a while now and will probably continue to be that way for the near future. So, yeah, um, I just wanted to take the time to talk about what I have on the horizon here, and as always, there's going to be a table of contents down below if you want to skim around, but maybe listen to the full thing, because I feel like this is going to be kind of a beefy one, and I'm uh, going to, uh, yeah, just talk about a lot of stuff here and formally announce things that uh, I've kind of uh, been heavily requested in the past to do, and uh, I think people are going to be really happy with it. So, first thing, Kyuyaku Megami Tensei 2, as most of you probably know, wrapping up soon. Only five episodes left of the main playthrough of that. And I am happy to report I have most of that all edited and rendered out, and I just need to go ahead and schedule those and get them up. So, finally happy to put a pin into that series and uh, call it a day on that. I do have optional stuff in, like, the alternate route of that game to cover, uh, much like I still need to do with SMT1. Um, I will talk about that a little bit after, but... Just know for right now, I'm, my main plan is I'm going to finish that main route of Kyuyaku Megami Tensei 2 and then move on to other projects, and I'll revisit that stuff later. Um, actually, I, I guess that is all I have to say about KMT2. The only other thing I really have to say is, you know, it, it you know again, it was still a relatively slow Let's Play compared to the norm for Let's Plays, but uh, in terms of my standards, uh, if you look at the SMT1 playthrough I did and the Kyuyaku Megami Tensei 1 playthrough I did, I made pretty good time on that one. I'm pretty ha happy of myself and or happy for myself and uh, proud of the work I did for that Let's Play and uh, being able to get things out as quickly as I did. There's a, I had a pretty good upload streak there for the past two months or so. I, I was able to uh, get things rolling at a pretty good pace. I was really happy with that. Um, it's not often that I'm able to do that, so uh, I really seized that opportunity there and really started cranking those out, so. And yeah, just overall, I'm really happy with the quality of that Let's Play. It's, I, I think, one of the uh, ones I, I feel like I, I was just in a really good flow for that one, and um, I'm really happy with how that turned out, so. Yeah, happy to finally close the book on that and uh, maybe revisit it later for a little epilogue with the optional stuff, of course, but future Let's Play stuff. Well, before we get into anything, I do want to talk about the alternate route SMT stuff. So SMT1, Law Route, Law route SMT1, Chaos Route, and uh, Kyuyaku Megami Tensei 2 alternate route. So, the thing you got to keep in mind is that I do want to do these really bad. I want to cover them really bad. The problem is, they are, uh, they are a lot of work. I, the more I've thought about how I would cover these... It's a lot of work and energy for relatively little payoff compared to just flat-out let's play in a game regularly. Um, because it's going to be a lot of recording of superfluous material that we've already seen that I would then cut out and then just show the new stuff with. Um, and try finding a way to make that flow and not be too much like a highlight reel is gonna be a little weird and finicky and I'm gonna need to work through that process and make it something I'm happy with um, but at the same time they do have some cool stuff in them all of those different alternate routes for these games do and I do want to show them off because I think that they're part of the game and they're they have a lot of interesting aspects to them that are worth talking about and exploring but you just got to keep in mind that it is harder for me to muster up the energy and the work ethic to work on that versus just going on to another game so Whenever I can, again, afford to do that, um, I will try to cover those. Um, I still need to play around. Whenever I do edit, or whenever I do record that footage, I do need to monkey around with it a bit, and I think maybe try to find a way to edit those together in a way that I personally find comfortable. Um, well, I should say, only for KMT2, because SMT1, plans have changed a little bit. So... The last time I made one of these update videos, I talked about, uh, I regaled the story of me stumbling onto an old backup I had of my, all of my old SMT1 Let's Play save files and stuff that I had backed up to, uh, do the Law and Chaos routes that I had assumed that I had lost in the shuffle because that Let's Play was done, like, two computers ago. So, I had just assumed, like, well, 
that said, I, I, if I ever do those, I'd have to start from scratch, and, you know, that was obviously kind of a bummer. But with me finding those project files, I was like, oh, hey, this is going to be a lot easier to do, actually, if I want to do that. Now, that being said, things have changed between me recording that last update video and now. Uh, as I'm sure a lot of you hardcore Mega 10 fans know, actually, recently a ROM hacker, and I believe a, t a team, of, a small team of a few other people who, uh, I apologize, I, I, the only person I know is the main person heading this project, uh, Jim Zatan, um, and then a, a few other ROM hackers I believe they're working with. Uh, recently what they did is they took the localized English script that existed within the iOS version of Shin Megami Tensei 1, extracted it, and then injected it into, or made a patch that will then inject that script into the Game Boy Advance ROM of Shin Megami Tensei 1, which is pretty fucking cool. So, honestly, really happy that this sort of project exists. As you know, SMT1 is a very special game in my heart. Um, and as far as I know, the patch is mostly done. I do know that people had been, I, because I, uh, Jim Zatan has a Twitter, and I was kind of looking at the conversations and stuff that have been happening there and checking in every now and again. It seems like there's still a few little superfluous, like, superficial glitches and bugs and stuff that need to be ironed out just as they monkey around with things in the last, uh, you know, last vestiges of this project or whatever. But it seems mostly done, and honestly, uh, I, I played around with one of the earlier versions of the patch that had uh, that uh, came out when they were like, hey, it's basically done, and then they, they posted the link to it or whatever. Um, and I was pretty impressed with it. it. It's a pretty damn good patch, so really good work on that, Jim Zatan and everyone else who was involved with that project. Uh, kudos to you, and thank you for your hard work in uh, bringing over a... Uh, more like a professionally edited localized script than what we had with the uh, older fan translation which uh, i think dates back to like the early 2000s and is fairly rough around the edges there's a lots of th there's a lot of weird glitches and stuff that is um imperfect with that uh with that original um fan translation for the super famicom version so to see something a little more uh, refined for a more updated version of the game with more content and stuff to it is just really cool to see and, uh, yeah, if I ever went back and did SMT1 stuff, I think what I might just do, honestly, I'd probably just do another Let's Play of Shin Megami Tensei 1 for the Game Boy Advance and then cover the Law and Chaos routes there. Um, because then you'd be getting just the better version of the game with the better script. Uh, the music isn't as good. I like the SNES soundtrack a bit more than the Game Boy Advance soundtrack, but it's not horrible. Um, there's some other Game Boy Advance games where, the, you know, they're like Super Famicom games first and then they bring it over to the GBA where they just butcher the soundtrack. From what I listened to, I think the GBA SMT1 soundtrack is is fine. It's not as good, but it's, it's fine. It's listenable. So, yeah, I think, um, I think I'll go back at some point whenever I, I have it in me to just go back and record SMT1 that way and then do the Law and Chaos routes then. Uh, that just seems like the better idea at this point than playing a version of the game that I originally was working with that is, um, I don't want to say obsolete, because I, I, you know, th that original version of the game is still valid and has, you know, its merits, and it's always good to be able to go back and experience the original version and form of something and all that, right? But, um, the GBA game, I think, would be one that would be more fun for me to cover personally, and just, um... It'd be nice to show that off to more people, too, because I feel like people who are familiar with SMT1 and watching SMT1 stuff online, they've probably seen the SNES version to death, right? So to do a version that's a little bit lesser known would be a lot of fun um, and something that I think would just um, be nice to have access to and, and something I'd like to make for people. That being said, there are other SMT games I would like to Let's Play before I went back and did SMT1 again. Um, simply just because I've done SMT1 already, and I feel like it might just be a little bit more worth my time to do other games first before I do SMT1 Special Edition or whatever I want to call it. Um, so yeah, um, that will happen at some point again. So no real concrete, uh, concrete um, window of expectancy for when I would do either of those uh, KMT2 or SMT1 alternate route stuff, but... Just know that I still want to do them, and um, I would I would like to do them at some point. I'll leave it at that. But there's a, there's other stuff. Like I said, I would want to do first. And um, well, first thing I should say actually is that um, I have a lot of stuff that I'm going to do on the horizon 
But before I do that, I think I am going to actually... Uh, there's there's going to be a month or two here where I am going to be uploading stuff, but it's going to be a lot of like my M-Bond stuff or my... Um, that back alley knife fight series I do about fighting games. I want to spend some time with Guilty Gear Strive a little bit. And also, of course, I need to get back to uploading my Monster Hunter Rise Let's Play footage and stuff. And actually, I just need to get back to playing that game. It's really fun. It's just I haven't really had the chance to really um sit down and play it. Honestly, that Monster Hunter playthrough, doing better than I thought it would. I thought no one was going to watch that. And uh, it's, uh, you know, it's not my most highly viewed thing in the world. But there's, there's a couple dozens of you that seem to be enjoying it so far. So that makes me happy because I was just like, eh, I don't know if everyone wants this from me. But I... I was happy to do it, and uh, people seem to really like it so far, so that's been pretty cool. Um, maybe some more model kit stuff. Whenever I have the time to do that, I, I really wanted to go hard on Gunpla this summer, um, and I, uh, I'm i trying to, but uh, t getting the weather and stuff to cooperate so that I can go outside and spray shit, like primer and top coat and all that, has been a little annoying, and the times, like today, where the weather is good, I have other things I want to be working on instead, so... Um, Look forward to more Gunpla stuff and more uh, painting and all that, but uh, I I'll make those possibly a little more sparingly than I would like um, for, for a while here. Um, though, you know, I do want to get some big projects out of the way this summer with that. So that's going to be the next month or two, and then we are going to get into what I call the year of two. This is what I'm officially dubbing 2021. It would have been so nice if, if I was able to d get all of this to happen in 2022, but it didn't. So, I finished Kyuyaku Megami Tensei 2. So then, naturally, I think we're gonna move on to a highly, highly requested Let's Play of a JRPG. A sequel to a JRPG, actually, that has the number 2 in it as well. And that is, of course, Dragon Quest 2. Everyone, everyone, their mothers like Rosin. When are you gonna let's play Dragon Quest Two? Everyone's been looking forward to this. Every day I get DMs from Twitter from Dragon Quest fans that are crying. And they're like, Rosin, please, I need Dragon Quest Two in my life. I need to experience my favorite entry in the Dragon Quest series, and honestly, one that has never been beaten in terms of quality and fairness. Uh, no, so <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna do Dragon Quest Two, but I got some other twos I want to announce formally for y'all too. Shin Megami Tensei Two. It's finally happening, fuckers. I have started my Shin Megami Tensei 2 test playthrough this very weekend that I am recording this video. It's happening. I'm playing through the game right now. I'm uh, enjoying the early hours that I've played so far. I'm like, you know, this is a pretty good time. Um, and I am uh, really excited to be able to talk about this game. And honestly, uh, I don't regret the fact that it took me this long because I'm happy that I was able to cover Kyuyaku Megami Tensei 2 first because I actually feel like that game informs Shin Megami Tensei 2 in, uh, in a few different ways, and I think that being able to have that knowledge in the back of my head while going through and playing SMT2 will not only make me appreciate it more, but I think will just give me more stuff to talk about and more, you know, it will be more informative and just a better product than if I had just jumped from SMT1 to SMT2 right away. I'm kind of happy I went went back instead of going forward from that SMT1 playthrough. Um, so I'm really looking forward to doing that. And then... Around the same time, I am happy to finally announce Draken Guard 2. This is also happening. I need to start my test playthrough for this. And um, I am really curious to finally get into Draken Guard 2 and really uh, give this game the uh, deep dive let's play style that uh, y'all have come to expect and appreciate for my channel. So, uh, some of you may know that uh, the former collaborator that I worked on that Draken Guard 1 let's play with. Uh, is no longer friends with me and just in general is not a part of my friend group anymore. We are not on speaking terms. Um, and I had asked around a little bit in the past different people to see if we could do a Drakengard 2 Let's Play. Uh, and it kind of wound up um, not going anywhere. So I was expecting to actually just do Drakengard 2 solo. Uh, I am happy to report that I will actually be doing Drakengard 2 as another co-op commentary Let's Play with my friend Antinomi, who um, knows a little bit about the game, but again, doesn't know as much as I will by the time I have beaten it. And, uh, you know, we go back through and talk over the footage. So I will once again be able to um, mimic, or I, I guess continue with the... One of the things I really liked about that first Drakengard Let's Play, which is the the uh, dynamic we had with the commentary, where um, we had someone who really knew the game well, and someone who was kind of seeing it from a less informed perspective. Um, 
So yeah, I am really looking forward to actually going back through and um, being able to go through that and uh, just see how that turns out. Uh, and, uh, and, and, you know, I'm sure a lot of you are happy. That's just those two right there. Most highly requested projects I have ever gotten comments for. To this day, I still get people asking me, when the fuck are you doing SMT2? When the fuck are you doing Dragon Guard 2? You fucking liar. You said you'd do these games, like, years ago, and you never got around to them. I'm finally doing them. I'm so excited to finally be doing them. Um, things are all coming together. And then where we go from there, who the fuck knows? I'm sure there's a lot of you who probably really want me to do Nocturne, uh, especially because I kind of talked about it with, with the HD version coming out and uh, talking over that because it is kind of an interesting and very flawed re-release of that game that would give me a lot to talk about. Um, and also, there's a lot of you after Dragon Guard 2 who I'm sure will want me to do Dragon Guard 3 and the Nier games and all that. Um, what I will say for now is I will do Dragon Guard 2 and Shin Megami Tensei 2, and then after I am done with those, I am going to do a creative vibe check to see how I am feeling with things and if I want to immediately move into doing other Let's Plays of those series immediately right after, or maybe to avoid burnout, maybe put my creative juices and, pl and passion into... I, I shouldn't say creative juices and passion, that just sounds wrong, whatever. Um, creative energy and spirit into other things that I also want to talk about, because I don't want to... I, I know I talk about this a lot, I don't want my channel to ever devolve into just being the Shin Megami Tensei and Dragon Guard and Nier channel, because there's a lot of other shit I like a lot, and a lot of other JRPGs and other games that I really want to highlight and really want to talk over and think I could do also really good in-depth Let's Plays for, kind of in that post-commentary, highly edited style. Um, and I think it would be good for me to uh, maybe take a break after SMT2 and Dragon Guard 2 and maybe do some other stuff for a bit again, and then whenever I feel like going back to some more Mega 10 or Dragon Guard stuff, going back to those. Um, there's a lot of people who seem really convinced that as soon as SMT5 comes out, I'm going to do a Let's Play of that. I've never announced that. I've never said that. People just seem to be assuming that. Um, that is not the case. And honestly, too, I, I think I talk about this every update video, but I need to reiterate. SMT5 is not, like, a game that I'm, like, super looking forward to. Like, I'm curious about it, and I'll probably buy it day one and play around with it a bit, but, um, I am not expecting to do a day one Let's Play of that, but no fucking way. Um, I, uh, I just want to play it and, uh, just have an experience with it. Maybe I'll record it and do a review later, who knows, but I, I'm not planning to do a playthrough of that, at least not right off the bat. That would probably be a long time away. There, there's a lot of games I'd like to play before I did, uh, did SMT5. Um including other mainline games. Um, but to be honest with you, I'm I'm just not that excited for Shin Megami Tensei V. Uh, as I'm sure a lot of you have heard me talk about before, um, I haven't really been the fan... I, I haven't really been a big fan of Atlas's recent output. Like, Shin Megami Tensei IV Apocalypse I thought was really fun as a game to play, but I thought the story and a lot of the... Uh, a lot of different aspects of SMT4 Apocalypse really disappointed me with how they were handled, and I didn't really care for... Um, I don't even want to say the direction, because I think the direction and kind of the way they wanted that game to go in terms of um, what it was playing around with was per was perfectly fine. Like, I know I know some people are kind of pissed that it went more of a lighthearted tone compared to SMT4 Vanilla. Um, and I, th I, thought, I thought the tone was fine for what it is. I just think that it was handled pretty poorly, um, and it, it just felt a little more generic and phoned in than what I came to expect from that series. Uh, similarly, I thought Persona 5 was kind of dog shit. Um, that's not fair. I, Persona 5 is, a, again, a very fun game to play. I fucking hate the writing of that game. I do not give a fuck at all about the, that cast of characters. I think they're terrible. Um, maybe someday I'll play Royal, because I, I know people who are also in the camp of I didn't care for Persona 5 went back and played Royal, and they're like, okay, the new stuff in Royal is pretty cool. Uh, maybe if I have 150 hours of my life to spare one of these days, I'll go back and do that, but it's very low on my priority list. I just, I don't, I didn't care for that game at all, and I don't really care about any of the spinoffs either. Um, and just in general, just Modern Atlas stuff, I just haven't really been feeling. I feel like, feel like they kind of sold out in a few ways, and they just don't make the types of stories and stuff that I resonate with. And um, instead of being, like, mad about that, or just being like... Ugh. I'm the angry Atlas gamer, and here's why Atlas sucks now. I just kind of redirect that energy, and I focus on the things that are being made right now that I that I like instead, and uh, just, um, you know, playing the things I like to play, and 
getting those sorts of experiences from other media because you know there's a whole world of different things out there i i never want to limit myself to just focusing on different different franchisers or different things you know there's a lot of different things i like a lot don't get me wrong like i'm sure by now if you've been subscribed you know i fucking love gundam a lot um but i never i never want to limit myself in that way um i've said this before i'd love to do a final fantasy and saga stuff um at some point and on this channel too those are those are also big series that i uh really have a big place for in my heart and would love to do stuff with as well um so yeah i never want to uh limit myself or pigeonhole myself in that way so yeah um other than that some of you may be wondering rosin why are you playing bloodborne for this update video did you just pick a random game you were playing recently and actually i have to say well first of all i want to say I am replaying Bloodborne right now. That's this. This is recent footage. I recorded this like a day or two ago, and I gotta say, Bloodborne, very good video game. Hasn't changed. Um, <laughs> you know, it was a ten out of ten when I first played it. Still a ten out of ten now. Very, very, very good video game. Play Bloodborne if you haven't, and you have access to a PlayStation Four, or PlayStation Five. Just one of the best design games I've ever played. But the reason I am playing Bloodborne is not actually for anything related to Bloodborne. Um, I am doing research. Uh, for an upcoming actual play tabletop RPG podcast series thing that I've gotten a couple friends on board for um, that uh, is going to be kind of similar to the um, No Brand Sky uh, podcast series that me and a few friends did way back uh, years ago now where we played or we attempted to play a campaign of a, a tabletop RPG called Stars Without Number. Uh, and then it ended up kind of ending on a cliffhanger because we just, uh, things happened, um, and it just didn't end up getting wrapped up in a way that any of us would ever go, no one wants to go back to it either, really. Um, it was just kind of left in an awkward limbo where it's, it's just gonna be unfinished, but this one I have reason to believe <laughs> will be a lot smoother sailing and be a lot more consistent. Though, you know, you never know these things until the ship sails and you actually have the thing out there in the world made. But me and a couple friends are going to be playing Blades in the Dark with me once again playing the role as the GM running the game. And uh, I'm really looking forward to it. It is a game that is kind of set in that... Uh, it, it takes a lot of influence from pop culture that's kind of made in that uh, Victorian era. Not necessarily steampunk. It Really, it's not steampunk at all. But it, it, that fantasy Victorian... Uh, era type of uh, aesthetic. Uh, think Dishonored. The game actually takes a lot of inspiration from Dishonored, uh, and I believe even Bloodborne is also referenced in the PDF as a uh, influence as well. Um, and the default setting for the game is pretty cool, but I'm actually going through and I'm making a homebrew setting just because uh, that's the type of person I am every time I run a tabletop thing. I, it, it's an excuse for me to world build and make a new homebrew custom setting for me to set the action in and that's just something that that's half the fun for me running these games honestly is being able to make a whole new world and really get into the nitty-gritty of the cultures and the places and how the world works and how magic works and all of the mythos and stuff behind it um so the default setting has a lot of cool stuff from dishonored that i'm probably going to mimic there's actually a lot of cool stuff from the setting the base setting that works really interestingly in mechanical ways that I want to take and just kind of make versions of in my homebrew setting too. Uh, shout outs to John Harper for just being a wonderful tabletop creator and making Blades in the Dark, which then went on to have a whole system around it called Forged in the Dark, which is basically uh, an open license anyone can use to make games that use the same type of uh, game mechanics and system. Uh, and it's quickly become my favorite way to play tabletop games. I really love Forged in the Dark set, uh, mechanics and how they play versus things like um you know just any other tabletop thing powered by the apocalypse roll 20 or not roll 20 but uh d20 D, D all that all that stuff um it's just a really cool system that uh is very heavy on story and uh narrative pushes and pulls rather than uh numbers and um not as much statistics driven it, it's really cool so i can't wait to start running that and uh, getting that out for y'all uh, there's a few other things I have unannounced that I will like to do in the near future, probably in the, uh, yeah, that, that podcast will start as soon as I'm able to, probably in the next few weeks. Um, similarly, similarly, there's some other stuff I'd like to do in the next few weeks. Uh, I need to get back to doing Last Heart Left stuff too, at some point, um, just whenever, I know I said that 
I made a community post like, oh, we want to talk about Zack Snyder's Justice League and be the beginning. Uh, and then I don't think, uh, I think a lot of us, well, I me, I still haven't finished Be the Beginning because I was watching that with a friend. Um, and then I think another person who wanted to be on that never got around to watching the Zack Snyder stuff anyways. So that might just be scrapped and turned into a more general podcast where we might talk about those things um, and do, talk about other stuff later. But yeah, look forward to more podcast stuff whenever I get the time to. Um, as always, I would like to do more review and long form stuff, but that probably won't be happening um, for a bit here. Um, we'll see whenever I have the time to do that sort of stuff again. Um, who knows if something really inspires me to write and, uh, get one of those cranked out, then I'll do it. But, uh, those are still probably going to be pretty scarce on this channel for, uh, for at least for a little bit here, but I'd, I'd like to do more than I am doing now, but you know, liking something like that and, uh, being able to actually do it are two very different things as I'm sure a lot of you know. So We'll see how that goes. The last thing I want to talk about, Patreon. So I recently got into a slump, actually, unfortunately, for a few months now, where I just wasn't able to get Patreon stuff out on time. I finally have all of that stuff out and about. I finally caught up. Real sorry to everyone who pledged and uh, feels like they weren't getting their money's worth. And uh, if you want to talk to me about that and whatever, just uh, you know where to message me. T Twitter, Patreon, we can talk it over. And um, I'm perfectly content to... Uh, you know, talk through with you about that and, um, just go from there. But what I, what I kind of ended up realizing is if I do focus on having a more consistent, um, upload pace for the main channel, uh, that Patreon exclusive stuff is going to really get in the way with that. And it's hard to be able to get that out on a monthly basis. So what I'm doing is I, I trimmed down the Patreon support tiers even further. So at $1, you just get the basic video credit for any of my long-form videos whenever those come out. And then at $5, you're going to be getting all the exclusive stuff. And in fact, I have went back through and made all of my old vlogs and basically everything that used to be a higher Patreon tier, since those tiers no longer exist, they are just now open to everyone who pledges at $5. So if you want to go and uh, pledge to the Patreon, you have a shit ton of stuff that you can go back through in terms of vlogs I've recorded and also the Let's Try series where I take a look at a, a game and just record like a first impression uh, sort of uh, impromptu Let's Play thing for it. Um, you can go back through and view all of those. And actually, another thing I want to do actually moving forward is I think I'm going to do this for the Shin Megami Tensei 2 playthrough. I want to record a kind of more behind the scenes type video series and this is something i've actually wanted to do for a while now um where i'm gonna just go through and kind of talk about what it's like to make a let's play and how i make my let's plays and uh just getting into why i make certain decisions and why i do things the way i do um and you know if you are if you're someone who watches my stuff and you maybe have wanted to consider let's playing stuff in general not just like rpgs but just anything um, that might be a good resource for you if you're, you know, I'm not going to pretend I am technically proficient at this sort of thing or even some, I don't even think I am the best Let's Player in my realm by far, you know. I, I, I think I'm pretty decent at what I do and I'm pretty happy with the stuff I make, but there's a lot of areas I could improve and uh, just a lot of different things that would uh, really clean up the types of videos I make and uh, make them more technically sound. But uh, if you just want to make things and you kind of want to get an idea for making stuff and uh kind of the thought processes behind making something and editing and all that sort of stuff and just some basic some basic skills that will kind of get the ball rolling for you um i think it'll be a good educational series for you and uh just even what even broader just what it's like to make youtube stuff in general i think that that series would cover a lot of that too just um i kind of want to talk about what it's like to make things for an audience um feedback um what to expect, uh, what makes for a good video, and uh, what doesn't sort of thing, at least from my perspective. And, uh, you know, it, it is going to be kind of colored from that perspective. There's a lot of things about Let's Plays that I have strong opinions on that I feel like other people don't care about at all. Um, I, I'm very particular with my taste. But, you know, if you like my stuff and you're kind of like, hey, I wouldn't mind making stuff that's kind of more in line or kind of carries the spirit of what I kind of do here, um, you know, it might not be a bad idea to maybe uh, look forward to that and pledge at that $5 tier and get access to those whenever I make them. 
Um, so yeah, a lot of things on the horizon. I'm very excited, and uh, it's just uh, going to be cool getting all this stuff off the ground. Um, as always, things are subject, subject to change. The last thing I really want to talk about here, actually, um, life is a little hectic right now. Um, I don't want to get into it just because it's a lot of personal stuff, but between... There, there's been a lot of changes at my job that... Um, I don't want to say are bad, but they're not necessarily good either. They're just different, and I'm kind of waiting for the next few months to see how that all shakes out. Honestly, too, I'm still kind of looking for a new position at a different job either. If something kind of in my area opens up, I might be switching jobs soon just because um, I think I'm ready to move on and maybe look for something that pays me a little bit better. Uh, and also, too, maybe something that gives me a little more free time because I'm currently working well beyond the traditional 40 hours a work week. Uh, at my current job, and a lot of that labor is unpaid because uh, capitalism sucks. <laughs> um, and there's not a lot I can do, unfortunately. So, yeah, that fucking sucks, and I'm ready to. I I'm ready to look for something different. I've been doing this long enough, uh, and I want a job that treats me a little bit better. I think it's just a natural, uh, natural part of moving on up in uh, the sort of uh, area I'm in, in terms of uh, my professional industry. So there's that. Uh, I'm also going to be moving relatively soon, probably probably a few months yet, but um, I'm going to be moving to a different spot and uh, pr pretty close to where I'm at now, but just uh, getting the logistics up behind that. I'm, I'm shopping around and saving up for furniture and just uh, doing all that sort of thing. So that's going to be a big priority for me, be it, you know, well over making videos and stuff, getting all that squared away and making sure that uh, my uh, new abode is all going to be nice and comfortable and all that and making sure everything's going well with that so yeah uh that'll be an adjustment to uh look forward to i'm actually pretty excited about that um I, i'm uh it's not going to be like the fanciest department in the world but uh, i think i'm, I'm going to be pretty happy with uh the space i'm going to have and um it's going to be a, a little a little tighter budget but I, I i think i can make it work and i um think that uh you know it'll be good and you know hey if you uh <laughs> If you want to help me make rent, patreon.com <laughs> uh, slash rosinbrand. I think that link works. Let me let me actually check real quick. Patreon.com slash rosinbrand. Yeah, patreon.com slash rosinbrand. If you want to help me make rent <laughs> and be able to <laughs> um, justify making, continuing to make these videos for y'all beyond my uh, my uh, big boy <laughs> professional full-time job. Um, and then just beyond that stuff, uh, beyond that stuff too, there's been some personal life stuff with... Um, relationships and just more personal stuff that I, I want to keep private and I don't really feel the need to talk to here but there's been some stuff going on in the background with all that that's been uh, requiring my attention and full energy and stuff like that um, just to um, be able to uh, work things out so you know I'm fine don't no one worry about me everything's going fine it's just been there's there's been a lot of changes in my life as of late and stuff that I don't really fully want to get into uh, I'm, I'm doing pretty well, all things considered. Uh, there's just been a lot of weird hurdles in the road and, and different, you know, curves that I didn't expect going into this year um, that I'm currently wor working through, and a lot of those things require my full attention right now. So, yeah, that's going to be the reason why there's there's those other Let's Plays are probably going to be a few months out yet, but I thought that I might as well confirm that they are on the horizon. I am going to be doing test playthroughs and all that in the interim. It's not like I'm going to be sitting on my ass waiting to start, so... A lot of prep work and, and getting all that stuff squared away. And then uh, we'll do those, and then we'll see what else I want to do from there. Because, uh, you know, there's a lot of different games I'd like to do. Let's Plays and reviews and all sorts of stuff for. But we'll we'll have to see how, um, you know, how that all shakes out. So, thank you once again for continuing to watch my stuff. I'm still, honestly, still incredibly impressed that, like, my channel still has um, this sort of growth like it's a very like it's not the most exponential like super curve high up growth in the world but like i'm i'm still shocked that people find my stuff and uh support it as hard as they do and share it around and you know just uh in general i i've taken this thing further than i've ever thought that i'd be able to and i'm still a pretty relatively small channel in the grand scheme of things uh so just thanks for that i, I really appreciate everyone's kind words and uh feedback and it's just been a really good time. I can't wait. I, I love making things for all of y'all, and uh, I can't wait to make more. So look forward to future stuff on the horizon, and uh, I'll catch you later. I got some other video stuff I actually want to uh, finish up here. So yeah, have a good one, and uh, see you next time. Bye.